All right, once again, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, everybody, and welcome to the session today that we have got on the online schooling. Is it a temporary fix or permanent shift? Jazakallah khair for everybody being here. Uh, I know it is, it is an odd day, a weekday, rather the first day in Kuwait for everybody there. And I really feel so good. That, Alhamdulillah, you all have joined in, you all have made an effort to make sure to understand this whole phenomena that is the online education we're talking about. I will be your host and the presenter for today, Daud Waid. And inshallah, ta'ala, uh, seeing, I think I've been coming as a regular uh, you know, host and a speaker in and across some of the events in Kuwait. So Jazakallah khair to everybody, especially uh, the entire team at ICK, uh, to, to Rafiq Bhai, to Atif Bhai, and everyone else who put an effort to make sure that the, the, the voices, the messages, the new ideas reach to all of you. This being a very small introductory session, I'll make it very light. It will be small, half an hour of conversation followed by your question and answers. And then what is in its store for you today? The idea of this whole presentation came from my conversation with Atif Bhai some time back saying, where is the shift happening in education? A lot of us, including me as a parent, it, one thing that we realize is education has shifted for sure. Good or bad, it is us to decide. Now, is it is it something that we are looking forward to? The opening of the school, what is the concerns? And subhanAllah, today was the teacher's day as is celebrated in India, you know, the uh, the, the birth anniversary of a second president of India, Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan. And very strangely, it was a very, very different kind of teacher's training. A lot of teachers that are part of Golden Sparrow, the organization I run and about which I will share with you in some time, I had never met, and some I've still not met. Some are in different cities, some are doing some amazing work, but the only connection we've got is the fact that we all are just teaching and part of one team, and that is online. Such a strange world. Yes, uh, I know that most of your massages have opened. Kuwait is very much regular now. And we are trying to normalize. So I'm in Mumbai, India. And slowly and slowly things have opened, but schools are still shut. And this is an indication that one of the things that I've really learned is despite the fact that schools are not working, education has not stopped. You know, when the pandemic started, it was a month two months and we realized okay once you know three months later the school will start it was very early on for the academic year to understand the implication it was also late towards the year end so we all said okay let's close the school for this year and then we'll open it next year and an entire academic year went the next one has come in and we're still waiting some of us are not even realizing that this could be the norm, stop gag. You know, one new variant comes in and in India, we have got this Delta variant come in. Suddenly the schools close again. I would never ever risk the health of my child over anything that is physical in terms of school. So what is that we're talking about? As much as I say that, in between the beautiful moments we got, we had some great moments over coffee, over football, and that is where I love to start with. So this is my team of teachers, my students out there. Look at these boys, mashallah, who are appearing in the grade 10 this year at Golden Sparrow. So we had some great time. And this is a photo of from just last week that we met over a beautiful coffee shop. These are 10th graders and they've never met. Some of them have not met each other as a school group. So when I had the opportunity to have a little coffee with them, I am taking a selfie. And mashallah, yes, I look like a student there. Yes, alhamdulillah. You know, sometimes it's important to give yourself compliment, right? I'm doing a marriage workshop later this week, and you'll get to know more about that. But the idea was these students are appearing for the 10th grade. And somewhere I realized the two most affected group in the pandemic are the senior group, the 10th graders, and these group, I call them the, you know, the early schoolers, the first steps to school, the pre-primary and the primary who have never seen an inside of a school. I've got so many students in grade one at Golden Sparrow for whom an entire concept of school is a Zoom meeting. They don't know what school is because they've never stepped inside the premise called a school building. But yes, this has been always welcome. No wonder when there was opportunity, I've, you see all my wonderful boys and girls in beautiful jerseys practicing. This is the sports that we've opened up. 
And Alhamdulillah, it's more relaxing to see that the kids are meeting in an open environment. You know, it's not a closed school door. They still have a lot of, you can still see a lot of, you know, it's very difficult to have a social distance in a football match, but at least when they're training and practice, there's social distancing happening. And this is what I think of a school. This is the future, and hopefully you will get some answers as I seek mine, what is the future of education? Schools are great. Alhamdulillah, you know, all of us have been part of schools. You are part of a school. I have been through school, and I think we've come out good, isn't it? Mashallah, the fact that you all have good careers, you are entrepreneurs, or you are into, into great companies as, as working, you all have done well. But unfortunately, it could be the same route that these companies on your screen have taken that schools are taking today. Nokia. I remember I started my career from Chennai, then I moved to Dubai, and the only phones we perhaps had were Nokias and Motorola's. You know, it wasn't the iPhone, the Blackberry did come in, but where are we talking about? If you use a Nokia, as if people look at you, and I'm sorry if, you know, I know Nokia is like, the, now the Google phone is also Nokia, but if you use a Nokia still, and at least in the areas I know of, People look at it the same way you say your email address is so Atif Sayyid at hotmail.com or Dawood Waid at hotmail.com. Say hotmail.com? How old are you? Seriously. Where are these organizations? Blackberry. There was a joy. Blackberry was the WhatsApp of, of the rich men is what I would keep saying. If you had a Blackberry messenger, you were communicating. You were talking to people. I don't see anybody use Blackberry. Do you? Kodak. Compact, Blockbuster, Toys R Us, there are hundreds of organizations we can talk about it. In fact, the research says in the last decade and a half, 15 years, 52% of the Fortune 500 companies have gone extinct. And when you use the word extinct, these are the animals we use the word extinct with. Our schools going the same way. Our schools, at least the schools the way you and I knew, the school that started at 7.30 with a prayer and an assembly, the schools where you were rushed into a school bus, where you were shakily thinking of a breakfast, where you had to wear the blazer on a Monday morning, you hated it, where the sports period was sandwiched between a maths period and a Hindi period or a language hour, and you hated it because that was the shortest period, a school that where the lunches were perhaps the most excessive or wonderful time you had. I think it's time we look at those schools maybe as not future, but the past of what education is all about. I hope you get my answers. Online schooling, my brothers and sisters, is here to stay. And this is what we're talking about. In my, in my years into education, so I started as an engineer. I'm very proud that I did some good work in engineering. Then I pivoted to a role called patent engineers. So I'm a patent trademark attorney. I did write my USPTO patent and law test. I did my Indian patent test. And of course, you know, I didn't survive too long in the industry because my real calling, my true calling was perhaps into the work of Dava. And then working into that, I realized education was I wanted to do all the work around education. So I still do school consultancy. I work with IIT Delhi. I work with individual organizations, Cambridge affiliation. And what I did in the last 15 years of my school career education, I wrote a small book. The book is the education riddle. And inshallah, I promise that when I come over, I'll bring a few copies I can give you. Hopefully you'll enjoy reading it as much as I enjoyed writing it down. In education riddle, I've written a small story. And the story is about this old man. His name is Rip Van Winkle. I don't know why somebody named him Rip Van Winkle, but RIP is also what is we call rest in peace, right? So this Rip slept for a few years. I exaggerated the story of his sleeping, while the story of Rip Van Winkle is maybe 20 years he slept. But I said, okay, what if Rip Van Winkle slept for 100 years? And after 100 years, this gentleman gets up and he starts coming back to the same city where he belonged to. And everything has changed. You know, he does not see the horses on the road, but it is, you know, it, it is replaced by these fast four wheelers that are whooping by. Rip doesn't understand the signal, the traffic line that he sees. He is not aware that the people are speaking something on the phone. He thinks people are crazy. Everything around him has changed. He doesn't see as much greenery as he used to. There are no birds around. And suddenly Rip realizes he might be in a different planet until Rip Van Winkle enters a school. And there the familiarity sets in. 
Everything is same out there. He sees the same benches, just that the color of the blackboard is shifted to white. He sees everything very, very similar. And this is a story of education system. Nothing much has changed in the last 100 years in the education world. Isn't it strange? 100 years, nothing has changed. And in two years of pandemic, the entire education changed. In the words of Slate, Steve Jobs, he said, I wish every child has a tab. So everything that he writes from pre-primary to his graduation is noted down. Perhaps not as drastic as that, but today, everybody, every moment of our teachers is, is out there for all of us to judge. You know, And we have become judgmental. But what I use the word is transparency. What pandemic has done is redundancy and transparency have been bought in front. What do I mean by redundancy? Redundancy is subjects like these. We still teach in CBSE maths something called the Roman numerals. You know, imagine a child is told that what does MCM triple X one V, it sounds very bad, I'm sorry, but XXX one V, what does it stand for? And the child starts decoding it. And the child says, oh, it is the year 1934. Where do you use the Roman numbers? Of course, you might use at a very high artificial intelligence level. But really, seriously, are we talking about Roman numbers in today's time? This is the redundancy that we have in education system. I'll give an example. Where is the only time you see Roman numerals today in our lives, in our daily lives? You will see it. Where do you see it? You can use your chat boxes or you can use your Q&A answers to tell me the answer if you can think of. Where do you see Roman numbers? Interesting, isn't it? You don't see them? All right. So if I were live and I would have asked you this question, I'm sure you would have thought of some people. Thank you so much. Right, absolutely. This is, this is the answer I was looking for. It's all on the wall clocks. Interesting, isn't it? You see the Roman numerals as a cosmetic thing on your wall clocks. And thank you so much, AH, for answering. And, and this is what we're looking into. The subjects that have no relevance except the aesthetic sense is what we are looking into. History, as they say, is digging old graves. And we indeed, the students hate history, not because it's not an interesting subject. I am a humanities teacher. Ask me, I love history. But the problem with history is the way it's taught to a student, the Harappan civilization, the Mesopotamian civilization, remember the dates, remember the people, they say, we'll rather bury them than bring them up alive. Oh, a new language. I, I was born in Kolkata. I studied Bengali. I went to Port Blair, Andaman Nicobar. I studied Sanskrit. I went to Chennai, Tamil Nadu. I studied Tamil. And, and in Bombay, we are studying Marathi. All of these are what you call secondary language or second or third languages. Of course, I have a little brush with French somewhere. I have always been a Hindi student. Where do I use all these languages in my, in, my, in my career, in my education, in my schooling? And unfortunately, I don't. You know, I did a survey and the only time people love Hindi was when Lion King was rendered and Shah Rukh Khan and his son, what's his name, Aryan Khan, they gave the voice over to it. Trust me, the way we are teaching a subject to a child, the child hates a subject. Some of you have studied Sanskrit or some of you have studied Arabic. Some of you have studied French for 10 years and you know your language as good as I do. We have never explored. The joy of learning a language has been reduced to mere collection of marks. You know, I have a friend in a college called New College in Chennai, and the only reason they take up Arabic as a language is because you have to copy the paper in your answer sheet, and you know that the teacher will be saying, oh, he is, you know, mashallah, good community boy, will at least make sure he gets 35, which is the minimum passing marks. Sad, isn't it? What has happened is schools had become redundant, and pandemic brought a fresh wave of change. Teachers were saying, oh, me and technology, are you serious? And look at what has happened. The world has come online. Everybody is using, you know, several a lot of rumors about Zoom. But of course, they were unfounded. Zoom is the only time I say don't use Zoom is when you're sharing submarine secrets of your national interest. And I'm sure we're not doing that. You know, the idea that has evolved in the pandemic, trust me, has challenged the way we looked at schools. Yet, after saying all of these, why do schools still exist? 
schools exist for primarily few reasons. And I listed a few of them among the many I could think of, but some really interesting ones, some funny ones, some sarcastic ones, but I'll just tell you that. A real reason the school exists is the board exams. You know, IGCSE, IB, CBSC, state boards, any Cambridge curriculum, British curriculum, Canadian curriculum, all of them ultimately boils down, Edexcel, all of them boils down to one little feature, what happens at the grade 10 level? What is the certificate valid about? And this dependency on a board has stopped us from thinking about alternatives. My brothers and sisters, the boards that we look at is only a milestone, not a destination. Let me repeat what I'm saying. The boards are a milestone, not a destination. And unfortunately, this is one little concept we have not understood, we have not talked about. Number two is the alternatives. All right, okay, I don't want to you know, go to a school, so do I homeschool? And I say, no. You know, when I decided to pull my daughters out of school, a very reputed school, Delhi Public World School, DPSs are a big chain of schools across in the Gulf also. Everybody like, oh, is this, this is the school. You stand in queue to get admission in the school and you want to take them away? And I went and I told my wife, Um Safiya, I said, come on, all the daughters, we are coming out of school. And she said, you better not put them as homeschoolers. And like, he said, you will go away to work, you will travel around, and at the end of the day, as a mother, I have to raise them up. And this was a very hard-hitting, truthful statement that a wife could tell a husband. And what are the alternatives then? We'll talk about that. So the idea was, we are not going to schools, but we are also not homeschooling either. And especially, I am not a very pro-homeschooler in one perspective. It's sometimes as parents, when you try to become the teacher, you also become the guardian, you also become the mentor, the career advisor. The child do not have the window to explore. And the child do not understand the ideas, what they want to talk about. And this is one area we decided we need real teachers. You know, maybe it's good to teach a child at grade one, two, three level, classes, grades, when they're seven, eight, nine years. But what about science? What about business studies? What about subjects like mathematics at, say, grade seven, eight, nine, ten? And that is why we'll bring something very interesting. Oh, of course, I just picked this up from a very popular movie called The Three Idiots, where we say that the peer pressure, what will our neighbors tell us? Mr. Kapoor, what will he tell us? You know, when you don't go to a mainstream program, everybody's like, okay, that's not good. And then finally, we all are some both students. You know, despite staying in a Gulf country, we all have done our education, perhaps from a standard CBSE or an IGCSE curriculum, a school that gives us comfort, we want to go to the comfortable level. And then despite 90% of parents asking me this question, have never, the children have not cracked. I'm not saying they're not good, but they're not cracked the IIT JE exam. They say, oh, what about the IIT JE? What about the NEET exam? And today I see so many proud boys and girls doing good at NEET, that is a medical exam. And they think these boards are the only boards, especially the CBSC board can help them go and crack those exams, which is a myth, very unfound. So all of these, where does it lead to? It leads to a very interesting story. So I was debating this few years back. Let's call it four years back or three years back before the pandemic, a year before the pandemic. And you see the date out there, 29, 2019. And as I was exploring, I spoke about this movie, Three Idiot and Tare is a Mean Par and some amazing, amazing, you know, you know, myth shattering movies that made a lot of sense when you saw them and you said, okay, I think the education system needs an uphaul, but what, where do we start with? And in this, in this beautiful movie called Three, which the scholars have recommended to watch, which is interesting, there is a character that this actor plays, Amir Khan, called Funsuk Wangdu. I don't know who the real Funsuk Wangdu was until I researched on it, and I found out there is a gentleman who is in Leh, Ladakh. He runs a very unconventional school, and I'm like, wow, that would be amazing. And subhanallah, when your intentions are sincere, Allah Azawajal, and there's no co coincidence, there's something called Qadr, destiny. I was finishing my IIT Delhi stint, I was coming back to Mumbai, and at the Delhi airport, there's this gentleman, quite humble, quietly eating, I still remember him eating a kulfi out there, alone, and he's not being disturbed. And I look at him, I stare at him, I'm like, who is this guy? I know him. And then I realized he is the original Sonam Mangchuk on whose name, on whose personality was the entire character based on. And 
Subhanallah, I was never ever so much happy when there was a delayed flight until that day I realized because I spent a solid two hours with this gentleman. We flew back to Mumbai. He was coming to Mumbai for an assignment. And Alhamdulillah, I ate his mind. I was asking him, I said, I said, Sonam sir, is it true what all we portrayed? And he said, there's a lot of exaggeration. I said, no, no, I'm not talking about the movie songs and all. He's such a humble character. And that is where I got the conviction to start what I thought was the unschooling concept. And when I spoke about the idea, mashallah, he showed, not only showed interest, he was curious, he was encouraging. And that was the journey of what I call the golden sparrow. What is golden sparrow? What I call a sustainable unschool. It's not a homeschooling concept. It's not a regular school concept. It's an idea that started with a concept that can children learn what they really wish to learn? Can we not look at board at the destination, but a milestone that a child achieves and moves ahead? A very good friend of mine, Danish Aga, and with whom I visited Kuwait, mashallah, when late Atif, uh, you know, Atif Bhai knows him very well, when late, late Arif Jamil Bhai was there. And Danish used to say that, when we were in tent and his sister had a hernia, her eyes were all red and all of these, you know, pimples. And, 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 and yet she went and wrote her tent examination. That is how important tent was. This year, there were no tent examination. Everybody was like a 99 percentile win. And yet we realized how foolish, how naive we were to put an entire effort, our health, notwithstanding to a program that today is not even relevant. Five years down the line, if your children are in grade one, two, three, do you think the world will be the same? Do you think the education system will be the same? Is it worth putting your child with all the risk in a school uniform, put them in a bus and throw them in a school where we don't know what's happening around? I'm not saying that this is the only way, but what I do realize, the concept that we taught you about, the, the poster that said online education is not a temporary fix. It is a permanent shift. And the idea of the permanent shift, my brothers and sisters, is the concept that a blended learning model is the model of the future. What's the blended learning model? The golden sparrow as a part of it, what I wanted to share about is an online school, which uses three very simple concepts, the head, the heart, and the hand. So essentially what we're saying, the cognitive, the social emotive, and the application of this, which is the kinesthetic part, the learner will learn. Finland is the leader in PISA test. PISA is called Performance Indicator of Student Assessment. Well, India did participate into it. And the first time when we participated, we came 100 and, you know, there were, there were 73 countries and India stood 72. And we decided we'll never ever take part in that kind of a test or an assessment again. Well, this, this year we had the courage, but then the pandemic changed everything. But Finland, the leading school, changed its approach. And they said a lot of subjects could be taught online instead of actually going into physical school. Today, science kits are done by DIY kit. You can still do the volcano with a little vinegar and a lot of passion and skill. You can have amazing bubbles on a Zoom class. And that is exactly what we've done. And this is what I bring to you, my brothers and sisters, a concept of an online unschooling. You see, today, the students have become peers to each other. Students from any part of the world can you know, learn and teach each other. Yet it is a very structured learning. Unlike an homeschooling concept, it is a proper timetable-based learning program. And in the last two years, or rather 18 months to be precise, as I've been heading the Golden Sparrow, I realized students have learned far more effectively than they would learn otherwise in a school. I didn't say the schools are bad. I'm saying schools need a change now. Even when the schools start, I recommend a concept of blended learning. Why? As I said, today was the teacher's day. I met some of the teachers for the first time today. And I realized even when a school starts, I would don't want to lose some of the best teachers who are coming and teaching my children just because they're far away geographically. It could be Shabana ma'am teaching business studies or Alfia ma'am teaching English or SDG. It could be Shazia ma'am teaching science. There's so many amazing people. And just because they're not physically here doesn't mean my children should be deprived of it. The idea of hybrid model exists now. And what do I mean by hybrid model? The children must be formed into small hubs. 
a hub is an area that they do the academics online in the mornings and then the evenings are free to do sports, go to a library, meet your friends in the garden. The fact that you can do that today at the comfort of your home is a joy of a pandemic. Many things have happened in pandemic. Some of us, or rather all of us have been affected either personally or through a loss. But yet, you know, they say in every shar there is khair. And the khair we search into it, the good we search into it, is our education has become transparent. Our teachers who were all hiding behind the school walls, whose pronunciation was not good, who, whose subject matter expertise were not good, today it was all exposed because today nobody can hide. Your teachers have to teach on the screen and the parents have become the judge of how good a teacher is. I ask you not to judge very harshly, but give your teachers an opportunity. But this is what I bring to you. One of the things we do in Golden Sparrow is add a concept called sustainable goals, the SDGs. And I'll talk a little bit about each of them as we go ahead and open the floor to some of your question and answers so that we have some fun. I promise a half an hour conversation. And here is the last part of what we're doing. So today, the new model, my brothers and sisters, that I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting to you in the, in the, in the post-pandemic era, the education of the future is this. It comprises of subjects that your student, that your child, your ward will never otherwise learn. The first one being entrepreneurship and environment. I call it the model head. Simple idea. There's some questions raised, inshallah, please post your questions and I will answer them. So use your chat as you talk about it and I will share the ideas that we've explored, the, the concept we bought in. Mashallah, students have become business savvy with our Entrepreneurship 101 course. Teachers from across the world have come. There was a business case study online and people have come in and given the idea. Alhamdulillah, they are, you know, they are doing the arts very well. So you're using your creativity, which is your right brain and business model, which is your left brain, and they are coming together. There is, people have done more arts online because teachers have been passionate. Of course, a parent had to do effort, bring in, there's a lot of things, mess around, but the fun, the joy of it has been tremendous. This is the model we're talking about. This is the idea of what a head could be. Some of the books that we use, there's an entire life skill curriculum that is being used. Life skill is far more important today than even teaching a subject like a language for your children. There's a lovely TED talk by Angela Duckworth who says, a researcher, she says, one of the best thing you can teach your children is called grit. Grit is the ability of not giving up. And that is what life skill is about. Today, there are cases of people giving up their lives, giving up a job, you know, just giving it up because of a small minor obstacle or a hindrance. Our children are far better in character than the small things that stop them. And this is what a head model entails. Mashallah, there is a beautiful book called The Boy Who Harness With The Wind or Harness The Wind. It's a movie on the Netflix. It's a movie which is a part of the curriculum in Golden Sparrow. The children are learning about wind energy, which is nothing but a subject in science, but also a subject in conservation and environment. And this is what they learn as they go ahead. The next area is what we call the heart. The heart is anything that is emotional. Your language programs are part of heart. Communication, storytelling. There is an entire public speaking lecture once a week and a reading program. A teacher reads a story to the younger one and trust me, it has created so much of wonderful areas. You know, if you ask me one thing that has happened in the pandemic, I always encourage people to read. If you have not read in the last 18 months of pandemic, it's not a lack of time now, but it's a lack of willpower. Now, I can't push you to read so much, but I'm sure I can make my children read. And Alhamdulillah, they have become readers. Their communication skills have improved. Mashallah, you send a small voice note and the teacher reviews the white note. There's a peer program around. Alhamdulillah, we had mock United Nations sessions and we had guests coming from Mexico, Indonesia. There is a green school in Bali, Indonesia, run by a, you know, a, a lady from, a Dutch lady from Holland. And Mashallah, she came and addressed the children. A green school concept. The idea is suddenly the world indeed is flat and you get guests from around because you're online. This is the SDG program that we run and we've done so many amazing things. And mashallah, not only that, 
every time there's an occasion, even if not physically, students have showed the pictures wherever the families have existed together, they meet, they hurdle up. And mashallah, one of the SDGs that we had our school students, families coming together was the SDG goal number five called gender equality. So much of fun that we had that mashallah, families became together because there's a school project to call your relatives across. So there is a theater drama, public speaking, reading are such a joy that the whole school is reverberating with this kind of ideas. Finally, finally is the hand zone. What am I talking about the hand zone? The hand zone is the maker's zone. It, it could be science experiment, technology integration, exploration, discovery. There is a computer art where students are learning concepts as scratch as simple as making a presentation on Canva, because that is what, making their own LinkedIn profiles for those who are 9th and 10th and 13 years and above. This is the new world. This is the social media, digital natives, as they are called. We are digital immigrants, right? Immigrants are like our forefathers going to the United States and settling down. But the children are natives. The accent is very natural. Today, they are digital natives. The first thing that a child hears when he's born is perhaps not the adhan in the ear, but more of a ringtone of a mobile or a small notification tab. So why not explore it? And then with all this around, we also made sure the children have physical exercise online. There is one time where they do at least mental health program. And whenever there are opportunities, we made sure they're small hubs. So let's say you all are in Kuwait. The academics is our responsibility. We ensure that the responsibility of the teachers, the best ones to teach the children, but then you all can once in a while book a turf or maybe regularly book a turf, meet all together, have these parties and subhanAllah, it saves just so much of a child's time. This is what Golden Sparrow is all about. And inshallah, I will answer questions from, from what subjects to what is the fees before inshallah, ta this is a small snapshot of a timetable we try to keep it very, very specific. We only teach four days a week because we believe education can be taught with the skills of a teacher, not just extra time that you have got. Alhamdulillah, for the entire team in Kuwait, what I and Brother Atif Mashallah worked out as a presentation is a specific timetable where Kuwait is, is given full. So it doesn't start at 7.30 Kuwait time just because the school starts from India. It starts at your specific time. The national holidays are observed. Also, Friday and Saturday would be holiday because our week starts from Sunday to Thursday, as in the Kuwait week. Plus, mashallah, the subjects that are, as I said, the different subjects talking about. Your core subject remains English, maths, and science, but you've got nine subjects in all, which includes public speaking, life skill, business studies, computers, arts, and a subject called social and SDG, which is all about the United Nations and the world of a difference we can make in a child's life. I opened the floor for your suggestions, your question. Along with that, yes, alhamdulillah, one more area is Islamic studies been added as an extra R beyond Golden Sparrow in connection with an institute called Palm Institute. So mashallah, this complete package that a child learns in the area where schools are charging exorbitant fees for uniforms and transport and extra building fee. Alhamdulillah, this is at an absolute area, open, transparent area of what we're teaching in child online, not missing any deadlines, competing with the best schools in the world and teaching them an entire program. Inshallah, I will, I will share the time, I will share the numbers for you to ask questions, but hopefully this is something that you've heard about I would open up your questions, use your Q&A, and, and we can take it further, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Right. I, I think I'm, I will also share the, my number and Brother Atif's number most of you have, but I will just put on. So you can just WhatsApp me. I'll just share the number right now and the email address for you to just drop in a message. If this is an area, a school that you're interested in, we are trying to create a group of students in Kuwait and add these subjects across. Michelle, I think some of you just got your jab right now. So I will, I will take up a question and we'll take it forward. Uh, the academic year, Jazakallah for the question. The academic year has started from 1st of September in most of the schools in Gulf. We are intending to start from 15th of September, inshallah, or, or you know, just a couple of days plus or minus, but that's the idea to build up an entire team of Kuwait 
and then we start the academy here. All right, a, a very valid question about sports and physical activities in Kuwait. The idea is as a city, as a city, we take responsibility of entire academics. So subhanAllah, your academic starts, let's say at nine o'clock in the morning, finishes at one o'clock and you're done. The, you, you see the child's progress. And then to, in the evening, this is what I say, you become a small hub where you take your child for a turf or join a standard academic academy which teaches football. And that is what we have done out here. So, you know, the only thing we don't add is a football. And my daughter says, the only thing you can't play online is football. But Alhamdulillah, we do some physical exercises. But football, you can, there's so much of time left. That's the whole idea of, a, of an online school. Uh, what age do I recommend? Honestly, today, seeing the pandemic, I would always say a child who's mature enough to handle a computer should go to an online school or can offer an online school. But, but today, I realize every child, even a three-year-old, can handle a mobile phone. But having said that, but it's a very, very honest question, brother. Uh, I, will, I will just let you know. Today, the demand for pre-primary online school have increased. And why is that? Not that I endorse nurseries and we don't have a nursery, but we had to start a junior KG and a senior KG, much against my will. I said, why would a child do that? But because parents are concerned to send a child to a small nursery where you're not sure about the hygiene there, the quality out there, and alhamdulillah, they're feeling safer for an online class. Alhamdulillah, with, with, sister, with uh, you know, sister Nazia and Valeta, ma'am, two of my teachers of pre-primary, we created a beautiful program. Just 40 minutes of class, two, two classes a day, four classes a week. And the children have learned so much from phonics, from theme-based learning. So it starts at pre-primary, and then it goes on from grade one onwards to grade 10, an entire academic program. Right, so can I have any more suggestions, your questions, a couple of things that you already had to ask? All right, a very valid question that uh, you are asking and, and most of you have it is, is the fee of the school, the entire year's fee is 60,000 Indian rupees. And that just because the fee is less, do not get excited or, or, or feel bad that what we not do, alhamdulillah, an entire nine subject will be part of that, plus the 10 subject, which is the Islamic studies curriculum, which is an add-on with the Palm Institute that we're going we're gonna to join hands with. So this is a program which is 247 or 250 KD, Kuwaiti Dinar, is the entire year's fee for your child for the entire academic year. Uh, Jazakallah Khair Sister Hiba for your question. The curriculum that we are following is the Cambridge curriculum. So, be, you know, as I said, one of the things, one of the criteria that we had is we wanted to follow an international curriculum. So, yes, alhamdulillah, it's an internationally recognized Cambridge, University of Cambridge. So, when I say the fee, this fee also includes all the books, the e-books that will be given. So, the entire books, Jazakallah, uh, I think that's the answer I've answered about the uh, books. The e-books will be given. If you want the physical book, they're all available from the vendors in Gulf. Mashallah, so you can go ahead. But we strongly say that we will take care of every single fee, including the books in this, including the assessments and the report cards that you get from this. Yes, the school is recognized. Uh, being an Indian school, a trust that's running in, so you get a transfer certificate, a bona fide certificate, which is valid for you to reapply to a regular school. If you choose to go, let's say a year later, you decide you want to go to a regular school, it is absolutely valid. Uh, Brother Yusuf, the classes are from grade pre-primary till grade eight as of now we're starting in. The reason I say that is ninth and 10th, 9th and 10th, we shift to an Indian board called the NIOS, National Institute of Open Schooling. It's an accredited government of India board. It's a board I have worked a lot towards understanding it. So this is a very similar board to CBSC. The advantage in NIS is you can use only five subjects and you get a certificate which is recognized by government of India. So 9th and 10th, we move to NIOS. So until grade eight, you're using a Cambridge International Curriculum. Alhamdulillah, I think I'm so happy to see the interaction and the questions. So, so hope, Brother Yusuf, that answers. It is till grade 10, 
but till grade eight, we use the international CB, uh, IG, uh, IGCSC, which is the Cambridge curriculum. And then we move to NIOS. By the way, NIOS is a board which not only is valid in India, it's valid across international, anywhere where CBSE board is. And it is also having a center in Kuwait. So let's say a child wants to write an NIS exam this year. I've got 15 students writing my grade 10 this year. And subhanAllah, four of them are Hafiz of Quran. So, so this is a board which is also accepted and has a center in Kuwait. You don't have to come to India to write the exam. You can very well write it down. Uh, yes, they can switch to O levels or A levels. In fact, one of the child have done it. No, you will not have to drop a grade because we follow the same British curriculum. And if you know the A levels or the AS levels, as you say, the 11th and the 12th, very much, mashallah, the child is developed analytically. The child has the same skills that a Cambridge A level has, so they can always switch over, alhamdulillah. In fact, one of the students did switch over and very gracefully they were doing perfectly well, alhamdulillah, in the IGCSE and then the later A levels. I'll still bring over the, the uh, screen, which has the mobile number. Just drop a WhatsApp so I can also share Brother Atif's number. Most of you know him, alhamdulillah. If you don't know him, you're not really living in Kuwait, right? You should know him. So, mashallah, he is the he is the ambassador of the school in Kuwait. And you can ask him reaching out or else you can just WhatsApp me and I'll share his number as well. Uh, yes, inshallah, ta'ala. Among the things that we'll be adding on for the Islamic studies curriculum or the faith-based curriculum is the act of, you know, health, tajweed, and Islamic studies. Hopefully, uh, the only thing we have not added right now is Arabic as a language, but inshallah, we, would, we intend to do that because it's a part of a third party we're adding on. Golden Sparrow is a complete academic program. We inshallah ensure that the child is academically as well as some of you asked with a British curriculum, uh, with A-levels, they can switch over from one school, they can take a transfer, and we can take it forward. Inshallah, Allah, we will maybe open up a Friday or a Saturday where we'll add up the Quran Hips program, the, the, uh, the Tajweed program at a younger level where they're learning, and inshallah, the Islamic studies. And in the Islamic studies, we've identified areas like Sira studies or Islamic history as a special courses that we'll be doing for the child regularly, inshallah. Allah. So there we are, brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair for your patience and your time. And barakallah feek for your kind message, brother AH. Uh, this is so nice, alhamdulillah, to have you here. I wish you create a small group. Ask me questions. Send me your personal uh, you know, queries if you have anything that I missed out on. Mashallah, I've been running Golden Sparrow for the last 18 months. And when I say that, alhamdulillah, I, I, you know, what I preach, I practice my, all my daughters, I'm, I'm proud father of three daughters, all of them, mashallah, are part of the Golden Sparrow. My eldest, Safiya, has memorized the Quran and she's in grade 10, alhamdulillah, and I'm very happy. She's taken up subject includes that business studies. She wanted to opt out of math. So that's an option we have. So she's opted out, but she's taken business studies. She has, she has science into it. And there are many combinations you can use. There's a subject called entrepreneurship, sociology, psychology, besides the regular subjects. The students have appeared for neat exams after writing the NIS boards, and they've done very well. So I, I do hope to see a good batch coming in. Think of the avenues that a child can go through. Think of the wonderful opportunities you're giving to a child, because you see the teachers, we ensure that one is to 12 student teacher ratio is maintained. Some of the best teachers, and we'll have teachers from across genres, across state, a child's exposure would be there. New students will come in, inshallah. And that is an invitation to all of you to explore what Golden Sparrow can do. Jazakallah khair, everybody, for all your time. And hopefully, we can take it, the conversation forward. Beyond that, inshallah, on the WhatsApps and the messages that you have got. Uh, I must thank Brother Atif, who's just got his vaccination today. So I hope he's doing well. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of you good health and keep you all safe wherever you are. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.